everyone, I hope this video is finding you well. Welcome to a writing and art vlog. I am in the process of incorporating more of my life as an illustrator on my YouTube channel. I am used to just doing bookish videos and this is going to be very bookish because um, it's writing. I am writing a book and I'm illustrating a book and I wanted to share the process with you all and to give you a bit of a life update because I feel like I've been going through this really big transitional stage in my life of going from a student to a professional working in general, just working in general. I feel a little vulnerable talking about this just because it's so personal, but I do feel like it could be helpful to some people who maybe are going through the same thing or who might just like hearing someone else talk about it. I have a candle right in front of me. I feel like you guys should enjoy the candle as well. We'll put it here. If you are new here and you don't know who I am, hello! My name is Carolyn and I am an illustrator and a writer. I graduated this past spring from college from university. I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City and I got my major in illustration and my minor in writing. For the past few years, and when I graduated, I had this idea that I wanted to work for a publisher. I wanted to work in a publishing house on an art team, and that's what I wanted to do. And, and now <laughs> um, I'm sort of questioning, questioning what I want to do and, and where do I want to work and what do I want to put out into the world and what do... What do I want to make my life about pretty much? And those are huge, those are huge questions to ask yourself. And I think that that's why I want to talk about it because it's, it's a topic that I think is so important and it's so important to, to do what you love because that has always been my number one priority. Illustration has always been the thing that was like the center of myself. And so when I was about seven years old, maybe even younger, um, my parents had to go to meet the teacher night at my school, which if you guys don't have meet the teacher night, it's basically when um, after school, all of the parents of the students go and meet the teacher that is teaching their child. So my grandparents came over and they were watching my sister and I. I was drawing from one of my favorite children's books, Caps for Sale. I had the Caps for Sale book out to my left and then to my right I was drawing on orange construction paper. I was copying the illustration from the children's book and that's the moment that I realized I wanted to be an illustrator and I wanted to be an artist and that's what I loved doing. Um, and I remember, I remember that so vividly and my whole life has kind of been surrounding drawing and art and especially drawing from books and the great influence that picture books and children's books and books in general have had on my life. And so now it's coming full circle really. And anyway, so I've been looking into finding finding jobs in a publishing company. I don't think that that's what I want to do. And it's so scary because what I want to do is uncertain and it's not guaranteed, but I am already doing it. Anyway, a lot of the jobs that I've been searching for, they are mainly design positions. And so that's a lot to do with typography and graphic design. And I'm not a graphic designer and I didn't specialize in typography when I went to school. I love typography. I'm much more of an illustrator than a designer. Um, but I do like mixing both of them and trying to challenge myself and try to mix them because so many of my professors said, don't worry about the type, all you're going to be in charge of is the artwork. Because they were freelancers, my all my professors were freelancers and they did teaching as part-time, they were speaking from experience where they get hired as freelancers and the company says, oh, okay, well, we have our in-house designer. And I was searching up like design jobs. It, that's the person that I would be. And it would be the person that is adding the text and designing the artwork for the freelance illustrator. It's become very clear that I 
and I'm sorry if you can hear the birds. <laughs> um, I think they're quite beautiful. <laughs> anyway, I have realized that I don't want to be the designer that's in charge of the freelancer. I want to be the freelancer. I want to be the one making the art. I was asking myself, like, who do, who do I admire? Who are the illustrators that that I want to be, that I look at their work and I say, oh my gosh, I want their job. And they're all freelance illustrators. You know, some of them are writers and illustrators, but they don't work for a publishing company. They work by themselves and they get their work published through a publishing company. I've kind of come to the realization that I don't think I want to work in-house, at least at the moment. For right now, I want to work for me and I want to make projects for myself and try to maybe get those published. I don't know if that will ever happen. That would be, I mean, that's my goal, but, but thinking about it is crazy and I kind of feel like, will I ever be able to do that? But some of my favorite illustrators and, and writers, um, I was thinking about them and how they're just doing it. They're doing it and they're successful and I want to try. I want to try. My main point that I want to talk about is just it's so important to ask yourself really what you want to do and what will make you happy and even if it's not the norm um that's okay if that's if that's what you want to do and that's your dream then go for it no matter what it is whether it's art related or writing related or not and there's not a second that goes by during the day that I'm not thinking about a story or the book that I'm reading or a story that I want to write or a story that I want to illustrate or a book cover design that I have. Last night, I, out of nowhere, I was like, I really want to crochet a sweater. And, <laughs> and that's just how my brain works, I guess. But there's not a moment that goes by that I'm not creating in my brain. Um, and so I feel like that's, that's what I'm meant to do. And it's so important to ask yourself, what do you think you're meant to do? And to do to do that and to do all that you can to make that happen and to make that possible for yourself. And I think the thing that I'm struggling with is I'm at that stage in my life where so many people are asking me, oh, so what are you doing now that you graduated? Are you looking for jobs? Are you interviewing? Are you going to start working somewhere? And it's so hard because like I already am working and I have a hard time like sticking up for myself if it's not a traditional like oh I go and I work for a company and all those things that come with a normal job it's just hard to explain that a lot of people are so supportive I have so many people in my life that I can't imagine not having them in my life because they're so supportive and they want me to do what I love and and I just have a great support system and I am so thankful for that and you guys are a wonderful support system for me too. Anyway, I'm sorry, I don't want to ramble on too long, but I just, I wanted to get a little more personal and to talk about these things that I think are such big parts of life. It's good to just get another person's perspective because when I hear other people talk about these topics, it makes me feel better. So I hope that this is resonating with you in some way and that you're going to like the changes that are coming to this channel. I'm so excited to show you more of my artwork because even though I am a reader, that's only one small part of myself. I'm an artist mainly. That's that's who I am. I'm an illustrator and and I'm a creator and that's what I that's what I love about uh that sounds so silly that's what I love about me but that's that's who I am um at my core and all of my artwork is a, is surrounding literature and is inspired by books inspired by stories and you know I got my minor in writing and I'm so passionate about the writing process and right now I am I'm working on a on a children's story and that I'm going to be illustrating and writing myself and I've had this idea for a while and it's now finally coming and turning into something um and I'm just right now I'm naming my characters <laughs> um and I I have a perspective working title and I have an idea and I'm really excited to share the process of of doing this with you guys I thought it would be really interesting to see how a freelance illustrator works and I have an idea in my head for a book and I'm going to document the process of making it and writing it and so that's what this vlog is. It is going to be me introducing a book idea to you and introducing some characters and some some fun projects that I'm going to be working on for me.
and that's just so exciting and for and for you for for whoever maybe reads the book someday oh i'm just so excited uh all of these things are really scary because even though i feel so good at like being a freelancer and feeling like i can do it um it's still really really frightening but i think the best things in life are scary and exciting um and that's what this is so fingers crossed that it's one of the best things my plan for today i've been like i said working on naming my characters the main heart and soul of any story i think is the characters and when i have characters then the whole story kind of falls into place and the main thing about me is i need names i name almost everything uh my reading chair has a name his name is oliver the planter that looks like a sculpture her name is natasha after um natasha rostov rostova for more in peace i name everything because i think names give life and names give character and personality and names give a voice and i can't i can't have a character without a name so <laughs> the first thing that i am doing for this story i i had the idea and then so step one have an idea step two form it into something tangible and for me that is characters and naming the characters and i have an idea that it's going to be all animals it's going to be a world of animals but they are going to be anthropomorphic which means that they act like humans and they have human qualities and this video is probably going to be going up after my red rabbit painting process and drawing process of lewis carroll which i just did two days ago so here is my lewis carroll author portrait and i love how he turned out and i am so excited for you guys to see that video yes yeah, so today i'm just going to be continuing to work on naming my characters and kind of having them form into something more than just animals with names i draw a lot of people because I do my author portraits and that's all people. One of my favorite things to do is draw animals and especially working on editing my Red Rabbit painting for Lewis Carroll and Alice in Wonderland. I love, I love painting animals. I love painting and drawing animals and especially bunnies. There's, there's something about rabbits and bunnies that I just can't, can't not draw them. <laughs> Which I think that's a bit of Beatrix Potter in me. I'm just going to take you guys along um, on this journey with me and I hope you're excited because I am so excited. I don't know if you could tell I'm in this <laughs> I'm in this stage of like oh! <laughs> but, but that's life. Anyway, I feel like we're all a little uh all the time. Um so yes, okay, I'm gonna stop talking. I just this whenever I start talking I can't stop. But we're gonna keep working. Hello everyone, today is a new day. A few days have gone by since I filmed that last clip. Um, I am going to be going to the art store and to Barnes & Noble, but first I have to drop off some Etsy orders to the post office, but I thought I would take you guys along with me because I have to get um, some art supplies and also I'm looking into getting some books that have something to do with the inspiration for my children's story. So. Let's get going.
Hello everyone, it is now the next day, so I thought that I would share what I got with you guys. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. So we now have a haul because we are back. The book that I got at Barnes & Noble is kind of silly but not silly. It is Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne, illustrated by E.H. Shepard. So I wanted to get this specific edition of Winnie the Pooh because the edition that I have from when I was a kid had the colorized illustrations and they're a bit more like mass produced and they don't have the same quality as the original illustrations have and E.H. Shepard as well as so many amazing book illustrators are um, huge influences for my own illustrations and I when I worked at Barnes & Noble I saw this edition every time I went to work and I never bought it for some reason and now that I'm writing my own book working on my own story and illustrations um, I thought it was the perfect time to get it because it's just amazing inspiration. Oh my god, I love it. So I actually just recently read this book. I've read it my whole entire childhood. I am the one of the biggest Winnie the Pooh fans. I love everything Winnie the Pooh. My light switch is still Winnie the Pooh from when I was a kid. Don't tell anyone. It's just between you and me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so just first of all, the end papers are the map of the 100 Acre Wood. And I love it, drawn by me and Mr. Shepherd helped. So it's drawn by Christopher Robin, but Mr. E.H. Shepherd helped. Um, I love that they put the map on the inside um, end papers. The gorgeous illustrations, like come on, come on. Oh, oh. oh my God, I, I have to read you the dedication of this book because it like broke my heart and put it back together all at the same time. So it says, Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne with decorations by E.H. Shepard. When I write my book and publish my book, hopefully, hopefully that will happen. But I have to keep reminding myself, Carolyn, you're doing this for yourself, not publication, but at the same time, yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, if I publish my book, I would love for it to say decorated by Carolyn Marie Castagna because I feel like that's like decorations. I just like how that, that sounds, but also illustrated. Anyway, tangent. Okay. The dedication is to her. Hand in hand we come, Christopher Robin and I, to lay this book in your lap. Say you're surprised. Say you like it. Say it's just what you wanted because it's yours, because we love you. Ah, God. So that's A. A. Mon's dedication to his wife from he and Christopher Robin. There's also an amazing audiobook of this book that I've been listening to as well as physically reading it. And it has sound effects and it has like wind noises and rain and bees buzzing and like popping sounds and echoes. And it has like all of the sound effects that you would expect from um, from all of the scenes. I'll put a picture of what it looks like right here in case you guys are interested. Um, I love Winnie the Pooh books. I've been in kind of a reading rut and Winnie the Pooh definitely helped me get out of it. It's kind of weird, this process of like figuring out my story and what I want to do. It's like my life is kind of coming together in weird ways, like things that I did as a kid are affecting my writing process and affecting how I want to tell the story and my passions as a kid too. It's like the same. Uh, growing up, I had a bunch of different animals as pets. I had a tortoise. I had a mouse. I had frogs. I had a dog, a bird. I had so many animals because I just loved animals. And another one of my big inspirations is Beatrix Potter. And I wanted to get a Beatrix Potter book while I was at the bookstore yesterday, but they didn't have the one in that I wanted. So I'll have to get that online. She had a lot of pets growing up too. And I was always trying to convince my parents, can I, can I get a bunny? Can I get a turtle? Can I get, I didn't get a bunny. I wish I could have had a bunny, but I did have a tortoise, a turtle. His name was Prince. Um, and anyway, tangent. I am going to keep working on my story. So the past few days I've been developing character designs. I have been working on figuring out my main conflict, my main resolution, and sort of like the arc of the story and where I wanted to go and all of the like principal characters. I've been researching a lot about the different animals that the characters are, characteristics of the animals scientifically, but also characteristics that maybe are just more humanized. I'm having so much fun. I was going through, which you guys just saw, I was going through my old paperwork, um, all of my 
assignments that I got for my writing classes that I took in college. And one of my classes I loved so much, it was called Imaginative Worlds. And I had that professor for one semester, Imaginative Worlds, and then the next no, not the next semester, but the semester after that, I had him for fiction writing, just plain old fiction writing. That was my last semester, actually, before I graduated, and he is so amazing. I loved his classes. The way he teaches is just like Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society, but a little more toned down. <laughs> and yeah, I loved his classes, and I was thinking about, well, I was trying to work out my plot structure, I remembered one of the assignments that he gave us. It was this like web of possible plot lines. And so you like start from one point and then you break off and it's like, okay, two possibilities. And then you break off two more possibilities off of those possibilities and brainstorming technique of trying to figure out which, what choices you want to make in your, in your storyline. And I found it just now and I'm so excited. But earlier today, I did make my own version of that, which I will just show you guys really quickly. I don't want to share too much about my story and my characters just yet because I don't know how much I want to share just in general. I started writing it out. I have a text document on Google Drive that I've been working on the writing of the manuscript, another form of just brainstorming, like throwing down my ideas. And then I started, I was typing it all out and then I really wanted to handwrite it because I'm working on my iPad and then text do, you know, using text documents on the computer. I wanted to write it down with my hand. So I was using Procreate. Can you even see it? Anyway, I was using Procreate. I made a really long document, a really long canvas, kind of like breaking down the different parts of my story, which would just be like the, the chapter breakdowns, the narrative breakdown. That's what I've been working on, doing a lot of research on animals, uh, finalizing the names of my characters, doing character sketches. I wrote the preface, which I'm really excited about and super happy with how it's turned out. It will most likely change like a million times over. Um, just trying to figure out like how long do I want it to be? How do I want to illustrate it? I want it to kind of be like Alice in Wonderland, The Wind in the Willows, Winnie the Pooh, where it's a full story, almost like a novel, but it has like spot illustrations going throughout it. When a book has smaller illustrations on the page like these, they're called spot illustrations. Um, so these are spot illustrations. So I think that that's what I want to do. And then of course you do have illustrated spreads. So this is technically like a half of a spread because like one full spread is this. A half of a spread is this, which I think is like kind of the style that I want to go with. And then a spot illustration is is what that's called. Also the, the Little Prince as well. So there are so many of my favorite books that I really love their, their stories and almost novels, but they have illustration throughout. I know Matt Haig does that too with his books. Um, his Christmas series, he just came out with a new book in that series as well and it's illustrated by Chris Mould who I love his work too. Um, so many inspirations, so much that I have in my brain that I just like can't wait to put down. I'm just so excited. So anyway, I've been rambling for way too long. I feel like this video is just like introducing the fact that I'm writing a book and I'm illustrating a book and I want to take you guys along on the journey with me. Follow your heart, follow your dreams because ever since I was a kid, ever since I made that first illustration, drawing from that children's book caps for sale that I was telling you about. I knew I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. Not even a children's. I feel like children's book is kind of like you think picture book. That's not really what I have in mind. Um, like I just said, more like this. But anyway, basically just if you have a passion for something, then do it with all of your heart. And if you have the passion, then you will succeed because because you know you have you have that drive, you have it in you like for me, I just, there's nothing that I want more um, than doing than doing this. I don't want to do anything else. Like I was saying earlier, it, it kind of feels like my whole life is sort of making sense now and everything that I've learned in school, all of my passions, all of the choices I made without really realizing that they're choices that I made, um, like illustrations that I would do just for myself, they were always animals. They were always like children's book based and um, and influenced by the books that I loved as, as a kid and growing up and even now as an, an adult as well. So just like it's crazy to see your life kind of like forming into something. Growing up, I always said my future looks like a big question mark because I didn't really know. Like I knew I wanted to be an illustrator, 
but I didn't really know what what kind of illustrator and what that meant and where would I go and what would I do and what I would put out into the world as an illustrator. And now it's all starting to make sense. So if it's not making sense for you, then just look at what you do when you're doing things for fun. Look at what you do when you're not working and try to figure out a way to make that what you can do professionally. My whole spiel, and it's super corny, but just like follow your heart. And if you have the passion for something, nothing will stop you from succeeding because it's it's in you. It's what you were meant to do. And like, that's how I'm feeling. And I'm just so excited. And I just want to share that positivity with you guys and and spread it and and just say that for a while after graduating, I felt so lost and I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and did I want to go into publishing? Did I want to work in a publishing house? Did I want to be a book designer? Did I want to do graphic design? Did I want to work with text a lot? Like, what did I want to do? And even though those things are part of what interests me, it's not what I want to do every day, day in, day out, forever. And this what I'm doing is what I want to do and it's just like the best feeling ever so if you don't know that's okay a lot of us don't know what we want to do after graduation but just keep working and figure out what passions you have and try and implement them in in your work in whatever capacity it is whether it's art reading writing anything um non-creative whether you want to be a mathematician whether you want to be a doctor whether you want to be um a paleontologist or a zookeeper or whatever you want to be figure out what makes you happy and just do it with all of your heart like i said you will succeed and i hope you have enjoyed my very long ramble i will now stop talking <laughs>
so we got her on October 14th. October 14th is my grandmother's birthday. My grandmother unfortunately passed away this past January, and so that was her first birthday that we couldn't celebrate with her. Hello. Um, and she is, her name was Marie, and she is the one that I'm named after, Carolyn Marie. Um, so that was my grandmother, and we got Willow on my grandmother's birthday, so I thought it would be quite fitting if we named her Willow Marie. So she is going to be making quite a few appearances on my channel, so I thought that she could be Willow Marie Reads, and she will be, she will be part of the fun on here, and... I've already introduced her on my Instagram, so you might already know that she is here, but I just wanted to... Okay. She's sleepy still. Are you still tired? But yes, so she is just the best girl ever. Like, just, just look at that. Just... Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of work. I haven't... I've been reading, which is nice. Um, but I've just tr been trying to, to take my time and to spend time with her. And I also, this past weekend, I was a bridesmaid in my best friend's wedding and it was so magical and so amazing. And for the past two weeks, I've really just been focusing on real life and not my online life, which I think I kind of needed. I spend a lot of time online and it was just sort of getting to me and I, I needed a break. Um, and Willow is the perfect, <laughs> the perfect excuse and the perfect reason to take a break. So I feel like my hair is in her face. Um, so yes, here is Willow. She is, uh, she's here to stay. She is here for all the, all the fun, all the books, all the writing, all the art. Um, and I love her very much. And I hope that you're excited to see more of her because she is going to be a big part, a big part of the channel, a big part of, of all of this. Um, so yes, I have just been quite busy the past few weeks and that is really my update. Um, I think I'm going to close out this vlog here just because I kind of haven't been, haven't been working as much as I would like to. I have been here and there. She was just napping in her in her crate so I was doing some work as well. I'm also having my Etsy restock which is happening this Friday. That is October 29th of 2021 obviously um, and that's what these boxes are right here. They are my um, my prints. Can we just take a minute? Are you kidding? How are you allowed to be that cute? <laughs> anyway, I don't think I have anything else to update on. Just still working on my story, still trying to follow my dreams, take my own advice, and, and pursue a life as a freelancer. And it's great, and I'm loving it. Um, and it's good because now I'm a dog mom. I can, you know, work from home and kind of focus on her training and all that stuff. So, yes. Anyway, Willow and I are hoping that you have enjoyed this video and are having a great, great day. And yes, I hope this, I hope this video... I don't know, helped or just was comforting or anything. I don't know. Thank you so much for listening, pretty much. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you guys want to follow along on my life journey with me, um, whether it's to do with books, writing, art, reading, anything. Um, I appreciate it very much and I care about all of you very much. So yes, thank you so, so much for watching. Willow Marie and Carolyn Marie, uh, we'll see you next time. So happy writing, happy reading, and happy creating. And now we have a very energetic Willow, because she just had her lunch, so she doesn't sleep all the time. Is that your turtle? Is that your turtle? Can I have the ball? Can I have your ball? Thank you. Ready? Good girl. Thank you. You want it?